Yeah, let's go from one Wilson to another. Our draft analyst, Ryan Wilson, who had his eyes on some guys in college ball last week. One of those was Arizona wide receiver Ted Aroa McMillan, who rewrote the record book. McMillan, the first player in FBS history to have 19, 10 or more receptions, 300 or more receiving yards, 30 or more yards per reception, and four more touchdowns in a game. The Wildcats put up a 60-burger on New Mexico. This week, McMillan and company get Northern Arizona as five touchdown favorites. Ryan also had his eyes on Penn State quarterback Drew Aller last week as the Nittany Lions opened versus West Virginia. Explosive was the word used to describe Andy Kotelnicki's offense, and no lies were told there, at least so far. Aller threw three touchdowns in the second quarter, and he posted career bests in yards per attempt, air yards per attempt, and pass efficiency. And this week, Aller and company get Bowling Green as more than 30-point favorites. The point being, you want to be on Ryan Wilson's watch list. He's the host of the With the First Pick podcast alongside former NFL GM Rick Spielman. If these guys are watching you and talking about you, that means NFL scouts are watching you. Is he crying and in that talking about you? No. Oh, I thought, I thought it was like wiping away tears. It's like one of his favorite graphics. Oh, okay. He loves it. He All loves right. it. Let's yeah. welcome in our NFL draft analyst, Ryan Wilson, to dig into the week two watch list. Uh, Ryan, let's start with Texas uh, at Michigan. 3v10 here in terms of the AP poll. Some good matchups in this game. Who you got your eyes on here? Jeremy, football is back, and I know that because producer Noah keeps using that graphic that I forget about during the offseason, so it's good to see that thing. <laughs> Let's go to Ann Arbor, where Quinn Ewers, coming off a huge game against Colorado State, put up some pretty big numbers at home, and that was fun to watch. He's going to have a real test against one of the best defenses in college football. Quinn Ewers has been in the first-round conversation for what feels like years now. Uh, had a good outing, uh, like I mentioned last Saturday. I had a strong season last year. Returned to school, which was a sort of surprise at the time, but up against Michigan, it's going to be the real deal. Mason Graham is one of the best players along the defensive line. They have Will Johnson, my number one player uh, on my big board coming into the season, the cornerback who had a pick six last week as well. So we'll get a real test of who Quinn Ewers is week two into the college football season, and we will 100% be talking about him next week with the first pick in terms of how he graded out against Michigan. So I'm looking forward to that, Jeremy. Brian, what about Will Johnson versus Isaiah Bond in this game? Yeah, that's going to be fun. Isaiah Bond, uh, shade under six feet, about 180, transfer from Alabama, had a touchdown last week against Colorado State. Will Johnson was targeted eight or nine times, gave up five catches last week in Michigan's debut, and then this happened. At the end of the game, in fact, I'll tell a story. BMAC texted me and said, hey, what's going on with Will Johnson? And as the text arrived, Will Johnson was doing this, pick six <laughs> to the end zone. So apparently he heard, he heard me and BMAC talking about him, and he, he's a baller. The only question uh, when you talk to scouts is what, what's his long speed going to be? No one caught him on this play, so I'm guessing it's okay. But he draws uh, comparisons to Patrick Sertan the second, and that'll get you a top five draft pick, and that's currently where he's situated. Can't wait to see that matchup against Bond and Quinn Ewers. Yeah, that's going to be a great matchup at the big house coming up on Saturday. All right, another good matchup, Colorado at Nebraska. Uh, you're watching two positions in this game played by one single player. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it could be three. He might get to play quarterback for all we know. Of course, we're talking <laughs> about Travis Hunter. Absolutely electric last week. Yes, it was North Dakota State. Yes, they're FCS. North Dakota State's a legit program, number one. He'll get a true test this week, though. Nebraska's defense is really good under Matt Rule. But the question that we keep coming back to and we're going to talk about for the next six months, Jeremy, is what position do you play Travis Hunter at the next level? We don't have to worry about that now. All we know is he's the best cornerback on the field unless he's playing Michigan, and he's the best wide receiver on the field unless they're playing Arizona and T-Mac McMillan. Otherwise, he is electric. And the things that he is able to do at that size, playing that many snaps, is hard to wrap your brain around. Will he be able to do that at the next level, play 100 snaps a game? No, probably not. But that doesn't mean he is not truly special. And a lot of credit goes to his quarterback, of course, Shador Sanders, who's making his case, Jeremy, as QB1, battling Carson Beck as we currently sit here heading into week two. Yeah, and Emory Hunt uh, put it perfectly. He says, as a wide receiver, com comparable to DeAndre Hopkins, and as a cornerback, comparable to uh, Sauce Gardner. All right, next game we want to look at USF at Alabama. Kalen DeBoer's off. Offense look look pretty good in that 63 to nothing shutout of Western Kentucky, and I mean the Hilltopper secondary uh, is not terrible. So I mean, what are you watching for in this one? 
Yeah, Jalen Milrow. We didn't talk about him last week on the podcast because they weren't playing a big-name team, Western Kentucky, at least not in terms of uh, the competition we expect to see in the SEC. I want to see how this plays out. They struggled last year against USF. Uh, Jalen Milrow got benched. They went through some quarterbacks in that game. It was a sort of who-are-we-going-to-be moment, and, of course, they went on to, to have pretty good success at the end of the year. But I want to see if Jalen Milrow can continue to grow in this offense in much the same way we saw Michael Penix Jr. grow in that Kellen DeBoer offense uh, in the last two years at Washington because he has the biggest arm in, in, the, uh, in college football, almost certainly. He's probably the fastest player on Alabama's roster. It's just a matter of the consistency of playing from the pocket, Jeremy, because when you talk about these quarterbacks making the step to the next level, the athleticism stuff everyone has. It's the ability to get through your reads and make those plays. I want to see some Michael Penix Jr. like progress from Jalen Milrow here as we go into week two. I don't even think he's in the top five of the Heisman odds right now, sitting at a plus 1,000. So maybe if he blossoms into this offense, then we might be sleeping on him a little bit here. Uh, McNeese State at Texas A&M is where we want to go next. Aggies beaten by Notre Dame last week. Big favorites here, though, Ryan, which should bode well for the guy that you're watching. Right. Not often that we talk about McNeese State in, in week two. No disrespect to McNeese State, but this is more about Connor Wigman, right? Uh, he had some first round buzz over the summer. We talked about him at summer scouting. Me and Rick Spielman and Mike Renner joined us for that. They were pretty high on Connor Wegman. I wanted to wait and see. He only played four games last year. Oh boy, the Notre Dame game was forgettable in, in every fashion. So he's got to bounce back. This is what you want to call a get right game against McNeese, McNeese State. He has to play like he's just in the backyard, Jeremy. He, was, he felt like he was under such pressure, mostly coming from himself in this game, made some poor decisions, had two interceptions. You see one of them here. I want to see him just play football. And you can throw interceptions because you're, you're, you're trying to make plays, but you can't aim the ball and, and play the way he did last week. So hopefully a bounce-back game for him. Hopefully we can get back to talking about him as a top 32 pick because last week was, was a tough watch, I would imagine, for him, but also for, for me and Rick as we were trying to get through that tape. Ryan, does a game like that take you out of the first round? No, no, and scouts will be the first to tell you. It's one game. He had the foot injury, so he didn't play a lot last year, and he's pretty young. So there's a lot of reasons to be excited about who he is. He's a great athlete, has a good arm, can move in space. But what we saw last weekend compared to what we saw last year, especially against the U in that game against Miami, two totally different players. So he's got to calm down. He's in that new offense with Mike Elko. I think he'll get it together, uh, but I, I want to see him get right in, in this get right game against me, McNeese State. Certainly needs to. He had the worst completion percentage of any FBS QB so far this season that have attempted at least 20 throws at 40%. Our NFL draft analyst, Ryan Wilson, talking about his players to watch this week. And of course, Ryan is the host of the first pick podcast with the first pick podcast alongside the former general manager Rick Spielman latest episode 2024 rookie of the year predictions and a look at the 2025 NFL draft quarterback class you can download and follow wherever you get your podcasts or scan that QR code and get that latest episode right now